Hey everyone, I'm sure you all want to learn about how machines work and all. So I think we're going to have to start off with the simple things. Simple machines. Yes, they're super simple. And yes, we're going to see uh, all of them and how they work. Let's see the first one. The classic lever. A lever is a bar that pivots on a fixed point called a fulcrum. Play with the lever. What does this thing help you do? Oh wow, Angry Birds. It's time for Angry Birds. I guess you could say. Oh, that's a true fire in the hole. this thing help us do? I just wanted to really ask. Oh, so this is what it does. Here's the input force. And here's the output force. Put, push one down, get one up. Simple, right? It is. It's supposed to be simple. And it's simple on purpose. It's not hard. It's not meant to be hard anyways. You can see this. And you can even see the trajectory here. How does this how does this fulcrum affect the lever of the machine? Oh oops. Here is the fulcrum. Basically the thing that helps us launch. Oh, when the fulcrum is over here and it's farthest from the ball, the ball doesn't go that far, does it? That's because there's less f force to be put in than has to be put, than put out. Force in equals pu force put out. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Force in equals force out. Simple. So when you do this, it's high, right? So the force in is a lot. So the force out will be a lot. And we got a strike. Nice. Seems like the castle's getting angry. Uh, I bet we shouldn't do this any longer, should we? Yeah, we shouldn't. Let's go on to the next one. The wheel and axle. A wheel and axle is a round disc which is a wheel that turns on a cylinder or an axle. Whoa, that's nice. So this is a normal bike. Let's make it square, should we? That does absolutely nothing, does it? You can see here that he is turning it, but it does absolutely nothing because the wheel doesn't move. On a bike, on a bike though, this is what happens. Since the motion is going on, there's a force that pushes the wheel on the ground causing the person on it to move. We Let's try it out with a scooter. Fast, huh? Oh, but the fastest one of them all is this thing. It's an old bike. So the first wheel was much faster than the before wheel, which means more force. Less force required for actually riding, but more force outputted. Pretty fun, is it? Not if you crash, though. Not if you crash, though. Here's a pulley. Let's choose the strongest type. So, what should we pull up? Uh, let's try the airplane. Let's take it down. 
pull the airplane and pull it back up. How does this even work though? Well, it works like this. This axle has a rope tied around it. And these are wheels. We've saw them before. That, well, have rope on them. And when you push this forward, the, the rope gets, gets looser. So the rope goes forward here, turns, 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 turns again and boom back down here but why if I put one is it not strong enough why isn't it strong enough for this one let's take a look at the forces ah seems like it's way too heavy is it is it? But the force here is small. But what happens here is wherever the wheels it goes, the force will be max maximized by that much. Basically what happens is more wheels, it's going to be reduced by that much. So here it's only a quarter of the weight. Even though it's 40, this time it just feels like 10. Surprising, is it? Only a quarter of the weight, huh? Surprising. But that isn't even a quarter. That's even less than a quarter. Let's go on to the Inkline Plane, where we have a pinball challenge awaiting us. Pull it back and boom, we go. Now, why does this even work though? When you push an object up a ramp, ah, that's bad. You use a smaller force over longer distance. If you want to go from one floor of a building to another, it is very much easier to take a ramp than to jump from one floor to the next. AKA smaller force, bigger distance. Jumping from one floor to another, like from here to here, takes a lot of force, right? Well, what if you could run fast and then jump here at your normal height without having to exert much force and you could make it up here as well. That's exactly what happens here. So this kind of inclined plane, we'll see how this fares. Doesn't go that fast, does it? Let's try. It goes high, but not fast. But when this happens, it goes fast, but not high. But in this kind of configuration, it can go both fast and high. Pretty nice, right? Now for the last two, I think. A screw. A screw is an inclined plane wrapped around a cylinder. We saw that in the last one. You can see. This kind. The more inclined the plane is, you can see here the faster it'll go up let's see let's have a race the faster it'll move see we do this it moves incredibly quickly for this one 
it moves decently fast, but for this one, it's incredibly slow. Incredibly slow. See? And now, for the last one. A wedge. A wedge is two inclined planes that meet at a point. Let's try this. So when we push this down, we create a force that translates to left and right downwards force. Essentially, cracking something apart. Basically like an ice splitter or a knife. That's awesome, is it? Anyways, that's basically all for me. Thanks for listening. And, oof, it's chilly in here. Ah, much better. Anyways, thanks for listening, and see you in the next.